It still drives me crazy when the computational photography on a phone can do some things that a big, expensive full frame camera can't do. So today we're gonna to test out some software that can bring some of those computational AI features to all of your photography. This video is sponsored by Luminar Neo. A big thing that even the most expensive cameras can't understand is context of the photo, like what is in the image. I've got a great example here. There's these cowboy photos we shot a little earlier in the year. And traditionally, the way that I'd deal with it is I'd use the develop settings and I'd bring down the highlights a bit, which does a great job on the sky. And then I'd want to see some detail on our subject, so I'd raise the shadow. But it has this very flat, uniform look, and it looks like HDR. It doesn't understand that there's people here, it's just raising the darkest parts of the image. So I'm gonna reset the shadows, keep the highlights down, because I like that, and I'm gonna close the develop module. By the way, that does save the setting, so it's now applied to the image, and go into Relight. Relight AI is somehow understanding the real depth of the image and how far things are away from the camera. So if I bring up this brightness near slider, it's just gonna raise the light on our nearby cowboy here. And you can see as I move the depth slider, I can move that further back in frame. So, you know, eventually everything could be lit up like he is, but that's not what I'm going for. I just want the subject in the front to be lit and I can target it. That is, that's really cool. I can check out my before and after and that's, that's like perfect. I can bring the brightness far down a little as well. All right, inside a mood here, I could apply some LUTs. Let's do a little bit of film. All right, tweak the overall exposure a little more, add some film grain. And use this color harmony warp slider just to warm things up a little, nice. Okay, let's try another one. So here you can really see how the subject in the foreground is darker than the background. We open up Relight and that brightness near, I can have it really just target the cyclist instead of this big piece of architecture over here. Cause sometimes you just want that separation of different objects and this understands where those objects are. If it's not cutting out perfectly, there's also a de-halo slider to try to tidy some of that up. But I don't think this image needs it at all. And actually this type of relighting of having the foreground separated from the background by making it a little brighter is something I do in real life all the time. Like I can do a real relight here. So here, I'll put an ND on. And if I just kind of crank up my foreground light, there's this big separation that happens. Like I'm so much more cut out from the background. Now I think, I think this is a bit too dramatic for this video, but you get the idea. And being able to do this in post is really cool. All right, that's pretty good. I've also got this one photo from Hawaii that I thought it would be perfect on because it's a weird photo. It's kind of abstract. It's hard to really tell what you're looking at here. And it's just these like tide pools where water comes in. And yeah, let's crank up the brightness near. And as you move the depth, you can just see the light moving backwards in the frame. So yeah, I can bring up the foreground a whole bunch here. The background can go a little darker. Make a few more tweaks to the overall image. Here's another one. There's no human in the foreground. So let's see what it does. So I don't, I don't understand how it actually understands the depth because it's I mean, it's getting it right. Like as you move backwards, it's pretty accurate. And I think maybe more importantly here is bringing the brightness of that sky down a little bit. Of course, the goal is to make sure it doesn't look like HDR or too overprocessed, keep it looking natural like this is just how it was on the day. And AI masking helps with that because it targets just certain areas of the image. Let's see what else we can do. Last year, I did a video about Luminar AI and showed off their sky replacement. But at that point, they hadn't added water reflections. So I really want to try that out. You can see this image, there's really just clouds. Actually, let's try to bring it back for a second. See, even if we lower the exposure, like there's not a lot going on in this sky. It's not very interesting. So we're gonna add a completely new sky. I still want it to kind of feel natural. So let's try this one. And look at that, we've got reflections in the water of the actual clouds that are being added. So anytime you do a sky replacement, it's really important to blend it into the rest of the image. I did a whole video about all the details of sky replacement if you wanna deep dive into it. But so for example, I'm gonna turn up the atmospheric haze a bit because it can't be too much more blue than the rest of the image. And that goes a long way. That's actually like most of the problem here. And then probably just add a little bit of grain and I think that's real. Okay, but let's try some unreal skies here. Wow, okay. Considering what a huge change that is, it looks pretty believable. Okay, so what if I change the relight strength? I'm just gonna click through them. Just keep an eye on this reflection here. All right, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's try another image. This one's perfect for it. This is Lake Louise, and there's always a bunch of clouds that kind of sock in the back of the mountain there. They always just sit there. and doesn't give you a big, beautiful sky like you want, so let's try adding our own. Whoa, okay, that's... Crazy, uh, okay, let's try to blend it in here. 
But yeah, there it is again. There's the reflection. Sells the image so much more. Even though I was doing this manually in Photoshop, I, it takes a long time to add a reflection to water. All right, and since we're going over the top on this one and making the image fake, let's uh, bring in some fog into the background. All right, that's no, that's no good. Layered fog. Hey, there we go. Now it's just sitting on top of the water. It's behind the subject. Anytime you do a composite of different photos, it's really helpful to add some grain on top because then everything just kind of sits together more naturally if it all has the same amount of grain being applied to it. Okay, one more sky replacement. This one's just asking for it. Try out a few here. I feel like, okay, I feel like this actually is pretty close to what was happening on the day, but at a different time than this photo was taken, like 10 minutes, it all changed but I definitely need to flip the orientation, there we go, so that the source of the light is coming from the same side as in the image. Just turn up the grain in the sky until it pretty much matches the background. And it's also usually worth it to add a little bit of blur on your sky that you put into, just to match that softness of the uh, mountain in the background. All right, before and after, that is weirdly believable for something so dramatic. But I'd love to hear from you guys is this an okay way to edit images? Like last time I posted about this, there's a lot of debate of like, is this still photography? And I think the point is, it doesn't really matter whether it's photography or not, you're still creating stuff and compositing is a long standing way to edit an image. So I think we need to raise awareness that, you know, this is possible and this is happening and it's a type of artistic expression that's out there. And that's different from editorial journalism. And we understand when a photo is one or the other. But obviously the lines are being blurred. I'd love to hear more about what you think in the comments. All right, here's a snapshot from my cell phone the other day that can test out the new remove power lines feature. You can see there's a lot going on here. All the lines are passing through the building. This would take forever to do manually. Like it's really time consuming. And now if I click remove power lines and they're gone. Like look at that, even going through all the building here. Uh, I mean, I see a little piece left over, but wow, that did a really good job. The cleanup is not gonna be a big deal. All right, try another photo here. All right, not bad. There's still some little streaks in the sky. Where was that one? There we go. Clean that up in this little flyaway. And Luminar Neo is running on a whole new engine so that it's way faster and able to do things it wasn't before. There's sometimes that in real life you could just move to get the power lines out of frame and other times they're just in there. Man, that is really cool. Like even right through here, like just the smallest little bit of cleanup left, nice. Okay, last one, there's a ton going on here, so I don't expect it to be able to handle all this. Whoa, that is so crazy. And it got confused right here where it overlaps with the steeple, but oh man, that is amazing. Wow, that's pretty cool. So check out the link to Luminar Neo in the description below, and then watch that video I did about sky replacement because the big parts are easy, just getting the sky in there, but it's the subtle details that make it blend in and look realistic. So I'll see you over there, guys.